bringing the people behind our food to life. Risotto is a luxurious rice dish that's really easy to make and uh, a lot of people are intimidated by it because it's a, it's a little bit more of an involved process than making just your basic basmati or white rice dish, but it really is very, very simple and it takes about a half an hour or so to make. So we're going to get started by turning on the pan and we're using a wide, heavy bottomed saucepan or, or a pot. Uh, enamel cast iron works really well. I'm using stainless steel, something that's non-reactive because we will be adding a little bit of wine. And you want the heavy bottom so that the starches as they come out of the rice don't stick and burn to the bottom of the pan. So we're going to add a little bit of butter. You can use olive oil at this point too. Either works really well, um, it's up to you. And then once that butter melts, we'll add the chopped onion. Ideally, you'd like the onion chopped so that each piece of onion is about the size of the grains of rice. So the butter is melted. We're going to add the onions. And you can use a lot of onions or you can use a little bit of onions. It's really up to you. About a tablespoon of onions per person is a good amount. You can add a little bit of salt at this point and that will help to break down the onions and soften them and get them cooking a bit and season them as well. If you'd like you can use onions or shallots or leeks or even green onions. Any kind of onion is fine, it's really up to you. And if you like a lot of onion or you want to make a, an onion risotto, you can use multiple kinds and you can add uh, some maybe onions and leeks in the beginning and then add some green onion tops in the end. And onion blossoms work, chive blossoms work really well as a garnish for an onion risotto. Once the onions have softened, we're going to add the rice and the onions will take about five minutes or so. This is carnaroli rice. It's a short grain rice that's specific to risotto making. You want to use a short grained rice because those are the rices that will have more starch that will make a creamy risotto dish. There are several kinds of rice that are ideal for risotto. There's an arborio rice, that's the most common, the one that you'll find in grocery stores. And that one has a little bit of a longer grain and takes a little bit longer to absorb the liquid. And there are several other to, to choose from that you can find in specialty stores. And there are subtle but significant differences in each one, but any of the short grain rices will work just fine. So what I'm doing now is I'm toasting the grains of rice and I am cooking them over about a medium heat along with the onions and the butter so that each grain gets, um, what will happen is that it'll get a little translucent around the edge and you'll see that white dot right in the center there. And that's what you're looking for. And at this point, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. And you could have added the salt earlier, but I usually add the salt right before the wine, um, just as a practice so that I, I remember it and um, keep it well seasoned. So you want to choose a wine that actually tastes good. Um, I've chosen a local uh, Chenin Blanc. Um, Chenin Blancs work really well because uh, they have a nice um, fruity flavor without being too strong or too assertive. Um, they're a nice drinkable wine. And Risotto does take a little bit of stove time. You are, you are here um, for, oh, at least 20 to 30 minutes or so. What better way to spend your time at the stove than actually having a glass of Chenin Blanc while you are making your risotto? And this is a good indicator of about how long your risotto will take to cook. Cheers. 
So once that wine has bubbled away and the pan is dry again, just like this, you can hear it sizzle. You can see that, uh, that there's really no noticeable liquid in the pan. You're going to begin adding the broth. And you want to add the broth in stages and about a ladle full at a time. This is about a six ounce ladle. And we're just gonna add that in. You want to make sure that the broth is hot because if it is cold, you're going to shock the starches in the grains of rice. What you're ideally trying to do is to draw out the starches from the grains of rice slowly. And it is important to stir your risotto. Now you don't have to stir it every single second that you're cooking it. Um, but if you're here and it, it's very meditative and it's very relaxing, uh, but if you do have a salad to, to throw together, you can go back and forth, taking a minute or two in between. You just want to keep an eye so that when, whenever that pan becomes dry again, and you can draw a line through the rice like that, where it separates, and there's not a lot of liquid on the bottom of the pan, that's an indicator of when to add the next ladleful of broth. Now you can use a recipe uh, for risotto, but it's really not necessary. You put enough butter to coat the bottom of the pan and cook the onions, and then you add as much rice as you need, and generally it's a good handful of rice per person as an appetizer course. And if you're doing it as a main course, maybe two handfuls, or three handfuls for every two people. And the wine, you just add enough that it's a good pour, maybe a glass or two full. A little extra wine isn't going to hurt at all. It's just going to flavor the risotto a little bit more with the, with the flavors of the wine. And broth really depends on a lot of things. The size of your pan, the rate at which you're cooking your risotto, the amount of liquid that the rice will absorb. Um, so you have to play that by ear a little bit. And if you do run out of broth while you're making your risotto, you can always add a little bit of water to the pan. At, the, at that point, you've probably got enough of the broth flavor. In fact, you can make your risotto from start to finish with water. It's, you can use any kind of broth. Water is fine, um, especially if you're adding a lot of vegetables, say spinach um, or asparagus. Maybe, maybe the, you'd like something that's very, very clean tasting. And then water's great. So don't feel that you're limited in any way by the not having broth. So you can already see that it's getting nice and creamy in there. See each of the grains, but then that nice sauce all the way around them. People often ask me if risotto can be made ahead of time. And I really don't think that it can and with the results that make risotto such a wonderful dish. Risotto needs to be served as soon as it's ready. You don't want to let it sit. So the risotto that we're making is really a very basic uh, white risotto, risotto bianco. This is a stepping stone for any number of rice dishes. You can uh, use vegetables. Spinach is a wonderful ingredient. I would add it right now, about halfway through the process. Or asparagus, other vegetables. You can use carrots. You can use a beautiful primavera, different medley of vegetables. Peas are fantastic. And they soften right into the rice in a, in a really lovely way. Mushrooms, you can saute some right at the beginning with your onions and then add the rice and uh, continue to cook it. Maybe, maybe saute a few more mushrooms to decorate the top. And you can add protein, um, chicken, little bits of chopped up pieces of chicken or uh, shrimp or clams, mussels. You can use a blend of herbs and make a nice bright green risotto. You just blend up some parsley with maybe a little bit of tarragon and maybe a, a hint of mint, or you can go a different way with some oregano. 
and I would use uh, lots of soft herbs. Um, chervil is great in there, and then you just take that puree, and right at the end when you're finishing your risotto, you add that in. It becomes a brilliant green and really aromatic and flavorful. So we're getting to the point where it is getting really nice and creamy. And you want your risotto nice and creamy, but a little al dente so that you can you bite into each grain of rice. You don't, you don't want it to be a, a, a big bowl of, of um, gruel or mush. Uh, you do want the grains to have their distinct texture. So the rice is looking like it's nearly cooked. I'm going to take a taste. That's the best way to find out if something is done is to actually taste it. Maybe another ladle full of broth and then we'll finish the rice with some butter and cheese and take it right to the table. Now it isn't uncommon to see risotto very solid and tight on the plate. You can eat your risotto however you'd like it. Uh, it is more traditional that it not stand up on the plate, that it pool in the plate with each grain surrounded by sauce. At this point I'm going to add just a little bit more broth just to loosen it up a bit. You want to be a little bit careful because the rice will continue to cook even when the stove is off. So at this point, when you're finishing the rice, it's a good idea to shut off the stove. Um, as you can see, I've got enough liquid that it's really creamy in there, but not soupy. I'm gonna add a nice pat of butter. And this is gonna to add to the creaminess of the dish and really give it a, a nice rich flavor. And the butter will loosen it up a little bit more too. And then we're going to add a nice amount of Parmesan cheese and that'll tighten it up just a little bit and really add in a delicious flavor. Give it a lot of, lot of depth in there. But we're going to just take a good handful and sprinkle it in there. And then we're stirring it not quite vigorously, but kind of folding it and, and almost whipping it in there to, to get it all throughout the rice. So then we'll just serve the risotto into the bowls. And a little bit more Parmesan on top. So in about 30 minutes, you create a really wonderful uh, rice dish that can be used as a meal. It's a 30-minute meal. And with some vegetables and protein, it's complete. If the energy received from the pop-ups equals the energy that's put into the dinners or the brunches, that makes it really worthwhile.